In the movement of CSS animation in particular as well as all animations in other design fields, timing function is a decisive factor in the smoothness and naturalness of an animation. Completely controlled by two axis progression curve and timeline, thereby creating countless styles of movement. Called animation timeline. With linear, the conversion speed will be even throughout the process. There are also ease, ease in, ease out, ease in out. Even if you have enough control over this two-dimensional space, you can use cubic bezier to move the way you want. And so everyone thinks every timing function must follow the rules of the animation timeline. However, this is not true. If cubic bezier is said to be an omnipotent timing function because it can simulate every timing function that exists in the world. But there is a timing function that cubic bezier cannot simulate because it does not comply with the rules of the animation timeline coordinate axis. It is steps. Think of it this way. All animations performed by basic timing functions will move the object from the start point to the end point. The difference between them is simply the speed of the stages in the movement process. And here is how the steps timing function moves. Instead of moving the elements slowly to the finish line, it creates jumps to bring the element to the final position. What's more, each time the element is displayed, it stays still, and at a specific time, it immediately moves to the next position. It feels quite interesting, but where and when will it be applied? Please like and subscribe to the channel if you find the content interesting. And now let's go into an example of how we can use the steps timing function. Here I have prepared a small image in advance, which depicts the small movements of a jump. In HTML, I prepared a box element. Now I will use the image when it becomes the background for this element, with the requirement that the height of the image will be equal to the height of the element. Next, I want this element to be just large enough to see the first model in the image. So I just need to shrink the width of the box element. So this is the current state of it. The part that is blurred out is the part that we can't see. I want to create an animation where the image moves to the left so that all the images inside are shown at least once. With the default initial position of the background being zero horizontally and zero vertically, I'm going to create an animation that runs for four seconds with the default timing function being linear. Of course it will loop forever with infinite. In this animation keyframes, I'm going to change the horizontal position of the image to 100% to simulate the motion we want. And this is what we get. So what happens if I change the timing function to steps? Nothing happens. When using the steps timing function in CSS, we need to give it the number of steps we want to jump, not counting the first position. So if I want each of the remaining images to appear in the frame of the box element, then we need nine steps. Replace it here, so each image has appeared in the frame. Next, we reduce the animation time to one second. Since the images have been changing rapidly over a long period of time, it has helped us simulate the image of a game character performing a jump action. And here is how it will be displayed in reality. Of course, in these use cases, each image will usually contain more actions. For example, the first line will describe the jump. The second line will describe the standing position. And the third line will describe the running movement. Depending on the complexity of the game, there will be more lines describing other states. And of course, it will still be a single image. Back to the code, I'll now insert the new image here. Since the new image has three rows, I'll set the height of the image to 300% so that each frame only shows one row. By default, we'll see the jump in the first row. To be able to activate other motion states is also very simple. The key lies in the top position. If 0% corresponds to a jump action, then 50% will correspond to a pose. So I just need to replace the new value in the two positions reflecting the top distance of the image. And the pose state is activated. Similarly, with a distance of 100%, we can activate the running state in the third line. I changed the value here to 100%, so it was activated. It's that simple, right? Obviously, to change the state, I just need to change the position top value. So to make our code simpler and more professional, I use the position top variable instead of assigning a value directly here. With the default value being zero, corresponding to the jump action. So now, when I want to trigger the pose behavior, I just add the pose class. In the CSS, when the box element is given the pose class, I change the position variable value to 50% to trigger it. Similarly, the run action will have a run class and a position top value of 100%. It's simple, right? 
Just like that, no matter how many actions are described in the picture, our job is simply to change the position of the top to suit. And here is the complete demo. Hope this short video will be interesting to watch. To find these images, you just need to search for the keyword action steps, or a specific action and add steps after. A note is that the actions inside that image will have to be aligned in a balanced position to create the smoothest. And that is all the content that I want to share with everyone in this video, if you find it interesting. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to continuously update interesting videos about web design and programming. Thank you everyone, see you in the next video.